person and where that patient is going to grade you as a good surgeon or a bad surgeon. So I will be talking about sutures and closure, especially closure techniques. So in this talk, we will be covering suture materials, closure techniques. Basically, we will be talking about scissor closure, mostly of laparotomy and complication prevention. So when we say suture, what are the ideal qualities of a suture? Suture should be pliable. It should have good security for knot. It should not cut your fingers when you're giving knots. It should be non-reactive, non-inflammatory for the patient and good biodegradability. It should have adequate strength to hold the uh, tissues together. Sutures are broadly classified as absorbable as we all know. Early absorbable is catgut and delayed absorbable is PDS or polyglycolic acid and non-absorbable silk, nylon and polypropylene. There, is, uh, there are no data regarding the choice of suture that you use this number for this uh, procedure but by our experience we normally use catguts, polyglactin and con with continuous or interrupted sutures. Then again there is a classification depending on the quality of suture, it can be multi-filament suture where fibers are twisted and braided so say they form a very good knot, they have greater resistance and provide good handling and ease of tying a knot and they require fewer knots they don't, because the knots don't slip off. Example are braided polydexone, chromic catgut, silk or polyglycolic acid and monofilament sutures they require more knot like when we use proline or nylon so we have to put seven or eight knots and they uh, invite let less seed for microorganism now the needles needles are also of different type like soft tissues we use round body needles less traumatic cutting needles for fascia and tough tissues like skin taper cut needles for fascia and skin loops i think you all might be knowing what is loop a suture which has double, uh, su uh, a needle which has double uh, sutures together and a straight needle though it used to be a very um, old phenomenon to use straight needle. How many of you have straight needle in your OTs? Tell me one indication where we use it or which is the situation. You know if you do B lynch with a straight needle it become very easy. Straight way you can go to the posterior end and you can bring the thing and do, the, do it with the straight needle. Now, uh, many of us are using cutting needles. So the first picture here is telling about, <coughs> see this is the cutting, conventional cutting needle. See how it affects on the tissues. It leads to tearing of the tissue. And this is a reverse cutting needle, inverted triangle. And this is more tissue friendly. This is difference between cutting and reverse cutting needles. These are various type of needles and curvatures of needles are again important and most importantly we have to give movement, congruence of wrist movement during closure should be in congruence with the curvature of the needle. Otherwise a non-congruent movement can make a round body needle behave as a cutting needle. So here comes importance of how you use your hands while giving sutures. So what are principles for good suturing? It should is approximation ensure hemostasis and no knot should come on suture line. So we are there to approximate the sutures, not to strangulate. This is very important point because when we are talking about C-sections, any patient who we are uh, closing a uterus, we are keeping a chance in future this patient can again land up in caesar and she should not give way, your scar should not give way. So your scar should have good strength and that is the whole issue of giving a suture. So. Good now the, when there is wound healing it's by first generation where tissue is replaced by native tissue which requires oxygenation. So uterus heals by regeneration and the, another form of uh, uh, healing is by repair. When native tissue is replaced by fibrous tissue the, which takes place in skin and fascia. So as uterus is uh, uh, replaced by first regeneration it should have good oxygenation. And if you give locking sutures oxygenation is hampered so whenever closures are done i just went through literature non-locking sutures will have good oxygenation and good healing so you can use running locked or interrupted suture or subcritical suture for uh, skin closure choice of closure so running sutures have advantage of sp uh, speed helical nature of un unlocking running stitch every uh, evenly distribute tension along the entire wound and allows superior perfusion. Interrupted suture is not done properly, they can be detrimental to the strong closure. 
Now again there is a debate to exteroize uterus or not, that is of your choice how you were taught. But advantages say when if it is atonic uterus, if you have to give uh, do a uh, stepwise devascularization or you want to do any uh, surgical approach for PPH, extraized uterus is better and you have a liberty of viewing adenixa and posterior aspect of uterus to find any hidden masses. It was found that number of sutures required was lower and surgical time was shorter with extra abdominal repair. You now lower uh, repair of uterine segment, it should be atraumatic you should close suture uh, serosa to serosa it should be continuous and no decidua in suture line as it lead to endometriosis or weakening of scar proper ap approximation of myometrium to myometrium no enveloping this parrot beak effect because of this proportion in lower and upper segment whenever you are doing closure uh, at the end towards your end when you start doing there is you know beaking of beaking to avoid that beaking whenever you are closing just take in a uh, ratio of 4 is to 5 upper segment is uh, bigger than the lower segment so whenever you are placing the sutures you should have a ratio of 4 is to 5 now Cochrane database say the risk of uterine ruptures after single layer closure was increased 2 to 4 fold compared to double layer closure so single layer closure can be done if tubal uh, sterilization is thought of triple layer closure with classical caesarean or lower vertical incision or whenever there is T extension and lies, nice guidelines say you try in, uh, incision to be sutured in two layers. Sometimes there are difficulty in closure when there is placenta previa anterior, classical C-section previous or fibroid at incision side you have to go through the and uh, have to remove the fibroid many times and caesarean after full dilatation. Closure of peritoneum, many of us practice closure, many of us have done thousands of caesar without closing the peritoneum but the guidelines say neither the visceral nor the parietal peritoneum should be sutured at C-section because this reduces operating time and need for post-operative analgesia and improves maternal satisfaction. Uh, in a study it was seen few paper, few patients who required reload laparotomy and when peritoneum was not closed just after 48 to 50 hours peritoneum grew from all the side as it is a mesothelial tissue and it start healing and taking of its own abdominal wall closure whenever we are doing closure we should try to have if it is a midline incision we can do a mass closure approximate muscle bellies together going through muscle bellies is not so useful rather it can cut through and can lead to a hematoma formation just bringing bellies together uh, rectus bellies is sufficient to have a proper uh, closure facial closure prior to suturing and facial edges inspect the subfacial plane that there should not be bleeder because it can lead to massive hematoma even mortality continuous non-locking technique for rectus sheath with sutures placed one centimeter from edge of the fascia and place one centimeter apart from each other and to reduce incidence of incisional hernia without increasing wound pain or suture sinus formation slowly absorbable uh, continuous suturing has to be done now skin closure you can do subcutaneous tissue uh, now the question is uh, subcute fat to be taken or not so I can just give you a very small example if you take two cubes of butter and you place them together kya hoga? they will stick up so is it necessary to, su to put a foreign body in between fat layer and I don't follow and I feel if you leave it until unless it's thicker one it's more than two centimeter then to put a one or two sutures that to it early absorbable because if you are going to keep a vicryl or a foreign body there for two months rather it will give to sinus formation so good do a good approximation and maybe it will help up. give a externally give a suture so maybe you can remove it and you can have less of uh, sinus formation or infection now complications we will be talking the notation of watery discharge is a ominous science it can be it can lead to wound disruption yesterday i heard one paper they have told about prp in wound healing and it was really very interesting paper so skin can be done with vertical mattress or running subcuticular suture depending on the uh, depending on the condition of the patient running mattress suture is one more way where surgeons use this thing which i use when there is a big layer of fat it gives a good approximation and we remove it after 8 days so there is no foreign body left I believe if there is a, a suture matter it will lead to some adhesions or some fibrosis or some keloid formation in few patients if it is removed it's better now this is the patient this is antepartum, intrapartum and postpartum 
staples they are not so much advocated in obstetric or in our practice they can lead to some uh, if surgeons use for big incision suture removal you know while going through literature i found when we remove suture we can uh, what chemical to be used you can add a few drops of h2o2 it will remove all debris and then remove the suture so that can be helpful persistent sinuses sometime we see just try to inspect sometime a knot can be found if it is removed the sinus may heal incisional hernia a good closure will prevent burst abdomen if at all it is there after closure we have to give retention sutures to prevent because not in india but in few countries when there are repeat third fourth fifth sixth seizures you have to take care of uh, uh, good abdominal closure so take home message a uterus should be double layer closure non locking continuous no peritoneal or rectus muscle closure rectus sheet should be closed with continuous long uh, delayed absorbable suture no subcutaneous fat closure needed if it is less than 2 cm skin by interrupted or subcutaneous suturing should be atraumatic and non ischemic thanks for attentive listening